Welcome to the fifth video of the Foundry's Camera Tracker for After Effects 101 training series. In this video we'll be looking at cleaning up tracks and solves using the stats readouts, the track finders and the refine workflow. Okay, so we've done the eyeballing stuff to remove tracks which we think are bad. Now let's use the stats readout and the track finder to further clean up the track. So if we grab the layer in the timeline and hit the U key to open up the animated uh, parameters, you'll see we have a number of these set. Now these are set uh, both after our track phase and after our solve phase and allow us to see some very useful diagnostic information which is pretty much invaluable when fixing up your tracks. Since it's animated data we want to actually see it in the curve editor so let's pop this guy open here. So we have a number of different options here. Uh, the track ones we'll cover in a later section um, when we're troubleshooting a particular shot. For this case let's take a look at the solve stats. The former is an indicator of where an increase in generally bad points to generally good ones has likely thrown things off, and the latter of where the error in the points is generally worse. As you can see, both seem to indicate that towards the beginning of the track is where it's least happy with it, and later on it's pretty good. Next, per frame error max and per track error max indicate frames you want to clean up by deleting the worst offenders for each respectively. Per frame error max, as the name suggests, shows the maximum per frame error found in any of the points present on that frame. It's likely to indicate a point which has gone badly wrong at just that frame and which needs deleting, and it varies extensively from frame to frame. Per track error max, on the other hand, is a bit more tricky, as the track error is calculated for a feature track and doesn't vary across the course of its life. This shows the maximum value of that error as found on a track point which exists at that frame. Since it runs for the course of the feature point's lifetime, it means that the per frame error max generally varies relatively slowly, since one point is generally responsible for the worst error for a number of consecutive frames at a time. So now you know which frames the bad points are on, but how do you actually select the offending points? For that you turn to the track finder functionality which is available in the viewer menu under the track cycle options these three here. Each one picks the largest error or distance its name suggests and each has a hotkey associated with it. Since you'll probably want to delete a few points you'll want to turn to the keyboard for this one. Okay so I'm going to start with the per frame error and I'm going to find me some bad points. So let's go to the rough area I want to in the timeline like so. Don't forget you can use the page up and page down keys to cycle frame forwards and frame backwards which is very useful. So on this frame I'm going to hit W which is going to pick the worst offending per frame error. As you can see there we've got an error of 10.6 which is pretty high. So I'm going to hit the backspace key to delete it. Now if I hit W again we'll find the next highest. That's still pretty high. Hit delete. And you can keep on cycling down through these just picking the worst of the bunch. got down to around six, now down to four now, so that's pretty good. I'm going to leave that one. Then I'm going to hit escape to deselect stuff. So I'm going to jump on through a few frames, again picking points which are relatively high. So W here again, that's just under six, that's worth deleting. Nope, it's fine there. Next frame, W again, three seems pretty good. Oops, seven there back down to three. Okay. So now I'm going to hit R to update the stats readouts and there we go we can see After Effects is reframed but generally my errors are much better they're much more even across the course of the frame. Right now I'm going to do the same with the per track error max and the Q hotkey. So if I select the per track and then okay, it looks like I'm on the worst frame here so hit Q like so, um, backspace to get rid of that one, uh, down to two, yeah, let's get rid of that one. Okay, and then refreshing. Yep, that's looking pretty good. Maybe get rid of a few more. Using shift and page down to jump ahead 10 frames at a time. Hey, 
Excellent. Now I'll solve again. Great, that's improved things a lot. Using the track finders is very powerful and flexible, but can take some time to really clean up a shot. There are times when you simply want to brute force it and remove those out of range points across all frames quickly and easily, and this is where the refined functionality comes into play. Now you can find the various params for these inside the refined twirly, along with the stats readouts we've already looked at. So if I spin this guy down here, you can see we have the animated points we've already looked at, a number of threshold points, and a couple of buttons. First of all, delete unsolved. This is a quick way to remove all the points which didn't meet with the camera model on the last solve. Uh, the ones which essentially don't have a 3D feature point alongside them. In other words, the ones drawn in red on our viewer. So if I pop in here and say delete unsolved, you can see that point disappears straight away. Now these don't generally impact the solve much, however if you are happy with the rough camera path but find it's tweaking very slightly off where it should be, try hitting this and resolving as they can influence the path slightly. Next up, the real meat of it, the threshold parameters and the delete rejected button. Now by dragging these various thresholds, you're able to essentially select the points outside that threshold range and then delete them using the delete rejected. Also handy is the fact that when dragging the thresholds, the feature points which will be rejected will be coloured red, so you'll be easily able to see what's going to disappear when you hit the button. Bear in mind that some of the threshold work on params which vary across the course of the feature points lifetime, so some points may colour red despite the error reported on the overlay on this frame looking like it's under the threshold. It's of course over on a different frame. Let's try improving things by refining our two solve errors. So to do this, I'm going to need my thresholds in my curve editor. So spinning down all the parameters. Now let's start off with our per frame error. So I'm going to hit the curve editor button to lock it into our curve editor. And then I'm going to select my threshold here. Now by default it's set to the maximum value. What I can then do is drag this down. And you can see how as I do so we start getting the points coloured in red. Now if I delete rejected you can see how we remove all those points very quickly and easily. Now let's do the same on the per track error. So toggle off that one and select the new per track error and drag down our threshold value to say around here. Delete rejected again. And you can see how our threshold now pushes down appropriately. Okay, so let's hit solve again. Excellent, you can see our total error is now very low. A real improvement. 